Hello, today we are going to be moving on to our next lesson in chapter two, and we're going to be discussing something called continuity. So a function is said to be continuous at a point C if f of C is defined. So you don't have, uh, say, an asymptote or um, a hole with no other point somewhere. You have to actually have a y value at that x value C. The limit as x approaches c of f of x must exist, and the limit as x approaches c of f of x must equal f of c. Therefore, a function is continuous at point c if your limit at, as x approaches c of f of x is equal to f of c, because that can't happen if the limit doesn't exist in the first place or if f of c is undefined. So some way to think about this is a continuous graph can be drawn without lifting your pencil from the paper. In other words, there's no interruption in the graph at the x value of c. There's no asymptotes, no holes, or no other breaks in the graph. So if we take a look at this function below, okay, we can see that there are a bunch of places where this function is not continuous or discontinuous. So we see that there is a discontinuity at this first value on the left where we have a hole. Because if we were to draw this, we would have to lift our pencil off the page. We would have to draw that hole before continuing on. So we have discontinuity at x equals negative 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we have a hole here. Okay. So if we look at the conditions above, what this means is that f of negative 9 is not defined. It fails condition number 1. Okay. Next, we also see that right here, we have what looks like would be a vertical asymptote. So at x equals negative 3, we have an asymptote. And so this would fail both number one and number two, okay, because f of negative three is not defined and the limit as x approaches negative three of f of x does not exist. Okay. We have a problem here at x equals three. We do have f of 3. f of 3 is defined here, but our limit does not exist because the left and right hand limits are not equal. So this one, we have a jump. Our, our graph skips places. So we call this a jump. It jumps from one value to another. And this one fails number 2. Okay. The limit as x approaches 3 of f of x does not exist. And then we have one more here at x equals 6. We are defined at 6. We have this point up here. Our limit exists. It equals 7 from both sides. However, we have that the limit as x approaches 6 of f of x does not equal f of 6. So it fails number 3. Okay, this one, we've got a hole and a jump. Okay, there's a hole at six and then it jumps to another value. So there are three different types of discontinuity, which we will name each of these. Okay, one is removable discontinuity. So this means that you have just one specific point that if we filled it in, it would be fine. So where we have that from uh, up above, would be the hole at negative 9. So at x equals negative 9, this would be called removable. Row movable, removable. Okay, and because f of negative 9 does not exist, okay, there's a hole there. And if we relocate this, it says redefine f of a to make the graph continuous. So if you had f of negative 9 was equal to negative 2, then this graph would be continuous at that point. We filled in that hole there. Okay. 
we have another removable point at six. Okay, what we have right now is we have the limit as x approaches six of f of x is equal to, if we look at our graph, our limit is equal to seven. But we have f of six is equal to nine. So you'd want to redefine f of six to equal seven instead if we relocate, we redefine. Okay, so those are both removable. Okay. We've got two other types. Infinite here would be like our asymptote. And jump here would be where we jumped from one y value to another. Okay, so our infinite would be at x equals negative 3 where there's the asymptote. And x equals positive 3 would be our jump. So just some more properties of continuous functions. Okay, if both f and g are continuous at a specific point, f plus g, f minus g, f times g, and f over g would also all be continuous at that point. Again, with the caveat that g of c can't be zero because it's on the bottom of that uh, fraction there with f and g. We also have continuity from the right or from the left. So something is considered continuous from the right. If as you approach from the right, it continues to be continuous everywhere. So something like that would be a function like this. This function is not continuous overall, but it is continuous from the right because as I approach C from the right this direction, this final destination at C is continuous everywhere, including at C. We would be continuous from the left if the opposite were true. If we had, if you were approaching C from the left, again, overall, this is not a continuous function, but as I approach C from the left, we are continuous everywhere along this line, including at our final destination of C. And that's because your limit as you approach f of x equals f of c there. A function is consider, considered continuous on a closed interval if it's continuous everywhere in the interval. And then also it would have to be continuous from the right at endpoint A and from the left at endpoint B. So if I take a look at this graph below, for example, we want to know where is this continuous, okay? So it's continuous at its very end point here, which would be at 6, 7, 8, and 10. It includes the end point. It continues to be continuous all the way up until we get to this open circle. So it's not continuous at that point approaching from this left-hand side of the point here. So this would be continuous from 10, including 10, sorry, negative 10, all the way up to negative 2, but not including negative 2 as you approach from that direction. Okay. If we start here at negative 2, we can start from the left at negative 2, including that point. We are continuous everywhere along this curve up to and including the other end point at 5. The last section, we can see there's an arrow at the bottom indicating it goes down forever towards 5, meaning it won't ever actually reach f of 5 here. So that would be an open bracket, doesn't include 5 from the right there. And we, as we move along the curve all the way up and over to this end point, we are including continuity at that end point, and that would be a value of 10. So we are not including the two here. Because the limit as x approaches negative two from the left 
of f of x does not equal f of negative 2. Okay, so it's not continuous there. The limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left is 5, but f of negative 2 is almost 3. Okay, this one here we do not include 5 because f of 5 from this side does not exist. Okay, so due to our asymptote. Infinite discontinuity at 5 from the right. Okay. That is all for today. Again, there's quite a few questions here um, from the seventh edition. So do the fifth edition ones maybe first and then pick and choose a couple more if you need, or you can maybe just do the seventh edition. These are pretty straightforward questions. Um, again, if you want to have your list of discontinuities and the definition of continuity out while you do the homework, that might be helpful. Um, you do need to make sure that you know this definition of continuity here. You need to know what this is, um, and you need to be able to state all three of these points to be true for something to be continuous. So make sure you know these.